Um, this album, um, which was donated in 1872 by the photographer, a man called Frederick York, um, contains 192 photographs taken between about 1868 and 1872. Um, the two most significant photographs are um, of the quagga, which died in 1872. This was not the last of all the quaggas, but it was the only one to be photographed alive. And here we have its left side and its right side. Um, and it is a, um, a, a tremendous thing to have a photograph of such a, um, a famous extinct animal. There is a lot of interest in extinct species and endangered species. And the images are used by people looking um, for a visual reference to an extinct species. Because quite often, um, drawings are of the dead, of, are from a dead specimen. So the photograph's going to be of a living specimen. So the pose and position is, can be completely different. We've got the thylacine, the extinct carnivorous marsupial. And it says thylacinus. Uh, and it's a photograph, so the um, number for the species is, page, is 932. I'll get up 932. Sorry, where are we? 904. And there we have two pictures of thylacine. It's also called a Tasmanian tiger or um, zebra wolf. Yes, these photographs um, were selected by the librarian as um, favourites. Um, this one, uh, taken in August 1927 um, by um, F.W. Bond, the accountant, who seems to have taken a lot of photographs, actually, probably when he should have been doing something else. Um, and this is what must have been removed from an ostrich's stomach during the post-mortem. Um, and I think that there's some shirts in here. It, um, it, it, it obviously didn't do the ostrich any good. And this one... Um, is of a camel being used to cut the grass um, the days before motor mowers. Um, and people often regard this as being a stunt. I think that this was perfectly normal and natural. Um, the camel is, after all, a beast of burden. And you are supporting the animal, you're feeding it, um, you know, which is expensive. And so you might as well get some, some work out of it. I've been librarian here since 1992 and so I'm quite familiar with the collections. This cabinet contains um, copy prints of many of the historic photographs, which originally were sent out to publishers if they were um, on request. It looks like some sort of iguana. Into the region, please. <laughs> um, we have here a selection of items available in the gift shop at London Zoo in Whipsnade, which reproduce some of our historic photographs. So, they're still available. One of the things um, that, that is interesting about the Zoological Society is that it seems to have had very little interest in photography. Um, there was a photograph taken of a living fish, the pike, by the Count of Montezan, which is one of the earliest photographs ever taken of a living animal. And they um, wrote it up in the proceedings and said, well, contribution to science, that this involves, and so on, is marvellous. And then nothing happens. And um, they don't seem to have been concerned to have photographs taken of new animals. They commissioned watercolours. As a scientist, if you, or any type of naturalist, you need the colour illustration to help identify the features of a particular type of species. Um, and also an artist can emphasise those identifying features, which is not always possible with photography. Um, if I take an example, we have um, photographs of pink-headed ducks, which, to be blunt, they're black and white, 
you can't tell that they're actually pink-headed ducks. They're an extinct species. But we also have watercolours from the early um, 20th century of pink-headed ducks, which highlight the colours, which obviously is a distinguishing feature of the duck. But this image um, is the only um, photograph of a living thylacine taken in the 19th century. Um, it was taken by Frank Hayes, probably in the summer of 1864, and we know from his own account that the way in which the animal was got to stay still was by exhausting it, by chasing it around until it collapsed in what I think is probably its drinking trough, and then the exposure was taken. People were less um, solicitous of both animals and children at that time. I think both were regarded as expendable to some degree. Um, nowadays, um, life is, is regarded as much more precious.